Hi, sisters. So welcome back to the Art and Wife podcast. Our desire for this podcast is to disciple women to passionately pursue submission. Yes, you heard that right. You can pursue submission with passion and love um, in, the, in our marriages out of reverence for Christ. And today I am joined here with my sisters, Jen and Dee, and we are talking about household responsibilities. And so we know, right, that this is going to look different from family to family. So it's not, listen, <laughs> Let's just start. This is not a place to start comparing and you go and tell your husband, Tiffany's husband does X, Y, Z. Tiffany's <laughs> husband do X, why you not washing dishes? And, you know, no, 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 ma'am. <laughs> That's not what we're going to do. That's not what we're doing. Okay. No. Now I can stop being <laughs> uh the Southern girl I am. Okay. <laughs> so we are not comparing, you know, this is just, you know, to give you some, I guess of uh, some framework or just reference to see how other marriages work, their dynamics, not from a place of comparison, but from a place of growth and maybe encouragement, inspiration. And we know that that changes from season to season. Um, so let's just jump into it. Household responsibilities. So what are your responsibilities in your homes? I feel like I always start, but I'll start. <laughs> so when Ed and I got married, we were two young, dumb kids with no money. So we had no prenup. But our <laughs> prenup was, if I cook dinner, you're washing dishes. That oh, was like wow. the one prenup there. Um, and that is something that we pretty much have held out through the whole 20 years. Um, that's amazing. I don't even think that's a real prenup, but in my mind that worked out and it worked out in my favor. So yeah, if I cook dinner, only if I cook dinner now, does Ed cook dinner? Not really. He makes a really good frozen pizza. Um, but as far as <laughs> <laughs> cooking from scratch. Maybe not his thing. So yeah, he does cook the he does cook the dinner. He does wash the dinner dishes. Um, he I wash clothes. He no, sorry. He washes clothes. I fold them. Uh, he hates folding. Mm -hmm. I hate washing. So we gotta do it like that. Now oh. that our kids are older, we divvy up the other chores that we really don't like to do, like bathroom. <laughs> my middle one does refrigerator. <laughs> my little one does like microwave. Those type of things. Mm -hmm. um, he does take out the trash and I think that's very stereotypical. Yeah. I don't know how that came about, but I'm grateful that I don't have to take out the trash because it's gross. Um, and I do the yard work. He, and I grill, I'm the grill, like I'm the grill master in our home. I don't know why. He despises grilling. He's like, I don't want to stand in front of a hot grill. And he's also a sweater and I'm like, I love it. I love cooking. So I'll do that. And I do the yard work for the most part. He'll water the garden like un <laughs> unnecessarily sometimes, which whatever, I'm, I'm grateful. But <laughs> I cut the I cut the grass and I weed and I do all those things like mm -hmm. that. So I don't know how those things evolved. It just kind of works yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, and I remember when we were kind of younger in our marriage, my mom was like, um, when we first had my first daughter, my mom was there and she's like, you guys just work really well to get together, together. And, and it's a team like we consider my husband's a coach and we, we kind of run our home like that like as a team effort um mm. and so yeah we all have to contribute our part and do that so there yeah that's kind of how it works in my house i don't know the rhyme or re reason other than the, the dishes that was like specifically set out but yeah <laughs> it just works for us now do you all have a dishwasher like does he just load the dishwasher we this so don't like the dishwasher Ah. So that's the whole thing. Yeah. I don't you know. You know, I used to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> we have one, but it doesn't, it gets used. Sometimes it gets used to like store stuff, yeah. but it's mm -hmm. not actually, we don't have the little dishwasher. Uh, we don't have a liquid to put in the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. What about you, Jen? Oh boy. So it has definitely changed over seasons, right? So um, I pretty much like clean the house, 
Um, and cook dinner. I cook dinner. And I think cooking dinner is also thinking up what you're going to make for dinner. Like Absolutely. that is my brain space, right? That's my brain space. Um, and then I do the cleaning, like the mopping, the refrigerator. I do the planting, the gardening. Um, but so my kids are older now. So I clean our bathroom, but Asa cleans the kids' bathroom. And then um, Lydia does the recycling. Asa does the trash. RJ does the dishes. Lydia cleans the counters. They, My kids all do their own laundry. Um, and Rondi takes care of the finances. So that to me is also a household responsibility that like he tries to work with me on it. Sometimes I'm just like, I don't always want to, I do the grocery shopping, you know, I, he, I get a certain amount every two weeks to like manage. So I manage that, think up the meals, that kind of stuff. Um, and I do our laundry. I fold it. I, it's so funny. I put away his underwear and his t-shirts and his socks, but he puts everything out the way. Cause I, I, I can't keep in my brain space where that stuff goes. Isn't that funny? So, <laughs> like, you know, I keep our room clean. Now, now I will say if I'm like, we're gonna have people over and I'm overwhelmed cause that, having people over, we do it a lot, less so recently. I think we'll get back to it, but I feel like I, I then I'm like, all right, I need you to do X, Y, and Z, right? Like, and then he'll help. Like he's definitely willing to help. Um, but that is, he doesn't think about, oh, the shower needs to be washed. The toilet needs to be cleaned. And that's okay, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I love how you started the episode, Tiffany, because I can definitely go there or feel whatever I feel about it. You know what I mean? But, but I <laughs> ultimately, right? Like, and the other piece is our kids go to school like 20 minutes away. They don't go to school in our town. So because I started to work at when they were younger, when they started school, Rondi would bring them and I always pick them up. So still he drives the kids to school and I pick them up. I take care of doctor's appointments, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, he'll help if, if needed, but I think, um, yeah, that's kind of the gist of kind of how things run in our household overall. Um, and he does all the planning though. He holds the calendar like, oh, wow. uh, he like thinks through like, okay, when we have meetings every Sunday and we talk through the week and we talk through what's going to happen mm -hmm. that week, who needs to go where. So we kind of do that collaboratively as a family. And now that everyone has jobs and now, you know, Asa got a car this week, Lydia has a oh. car right now. So it's like, it's like all types of seasons. But I remember when they were little and I would cook dinner and I would do dishes and, and there was this, like, when I was doing dishes, he would take all the kids and give them a bath. And they would sing this song, upstairs, take a bath, Lydia, RJ, Ace, the take a bath. And they would, like, all march up the stairs. <laughs> like, me doing dishes was like, I'm like, oh, everyone's upstairs. He's getting them ready for bed. I don't have to think about it. You know, mm. so it has changed over seasons. And now it's so funny. I think we got a text this week. This week or last week, RJ, like, sent a picture who left this protein powder on the counter again? You know, like, so it's so funny. Because <laughs> they're responsible. They're like, don't leave trash on your plate. Put the trash in the trash and then leave your plate on the sink. You know, so <laughs> the, the shifts and changes. Um, and I, we're big, like, my kids make their own lunches. I And part of that is because we're so busy, too. But I feel like they've learned they do their own laundry they fold their own laundry they put away their own clothes and so i think they've learned to have good responsibilities and actually rj does the lawn and he is meticulous with the lawn he he is like it needs oh, to be wow. cut so he does i do the planting and the mulching rondi buys the mulch i do the mulch but then rj does <laughs> It's coordinate all the things. Absolutely. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah, there and yeah. <laughs> I love it. That, I think it's, I there. think if it works for you and it makes everybody's life simple. And kids do need responsibility. Yeah, do. We are in a generation where you tell a kid a chore and they're like, why do I have to do a chore? Because you are a citizen in our household. Okay. <laughs> That's why you need to contribute yeah. towards this household. Yeah. 
And I yes. know there's other families and we're not comparing that the children don't have to do chores. And that's fine if that works for you. But I truly believe that I want to, I want to prepare my children well to live in the world and also be good citizens in the world. And I had a roommate in college who was dirty. And I don't care if she listened to the episode, she knows it. And like, I just don't think her parents, I don't think her parents made her clean up anything. And I was just disgusted. Like it was so gross. And I do not want my girls to be that college roommate. So I give them responsibilities and I'm okay with it. <laughs> my boys, their room, Lydia, Lydia's room is not clean. The boys room is meticulous. RJ makes his bed every day. They wash their own sheets, like all that. Like they are like the boys. I'm like, wow. Make them responsible <laughs> for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's self-efficacy, right? And it, yeah. it builds their own confidence. So yeah. I say good job, Allens. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you, Tiffany? Because you got pieces you young. So y'all got to do more chores on your own. You don't have any kids. No, we do not. And it's so funny that Reese calls us her butlers. <laughs> <laughs> Go Reese. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at, first, <laughs> at first, I was the only butler. So Chris was like, butler, get up and do X, Y, Z. And now he's also the butler. I'm like, okay, just like you told me, butler. Get <laughs> she oh, do, man. she really thinks she is such a princess. I'm like, girl. Whatever. She is royalty. She <laughs> who has she a is. butler at five? Yeah. And all her parents butlers. And who says butler? Like, <laughs> girl. But anyway. <laughs> so it. around like um, so Chris, he Chris, Chris does the yard work. He's outside doing yard work. I do not do he, I don't do bugs, I don't do mis like I do not want to be outside ever in life. <laughs> ever, like ever. Don't put me outside to garden, do any of that. No. So he does the yard work. Um, he cleans the bathrooms, like his he he is the bathroom cleaner. <laughs> I used to do it when we first got me, like when it was just us. I did like I did all the cleaning. But after I had Reese, I kind of felt overwhelmed by it. And so for a little bit of time, we had someone come in and help with cleaning. But I felt like we had to clean before she got here because it was just like, you have to clean before she comes. So then she cleans. I'm like, well, we have to straighten up and put everything back. Like we may as well just do it. So he was like, OK, well, what can I do? to um help you i was like if you do the bathrooms then i can do everything else and so he agreed to that and so he cleans the bathrooms now are they clean as often as i would like for them to be clean <laughs> maybe not. and so sometimes i do go in and clean them but mostly like i do the cooking I do. I make up my bed every morning. I do all the laundry, the dry, and I, I actually still iron Chris, Chris's clothes. Like when I do the laundry on Saturdays, I iron all his clothes. So when he gets up in the morning, he don't have to be worried about, oh, this is wrinkled. This, this. No, it's all in the I put it all hey, in Rondi, the Don't get jealous. Don't get jealous. <laughs> 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 I put them all on hangers, put them in the closet. Iron, and then I feel like ironing is therapeutic. Like when I'm in there, iron, I can listen to a sermon. I can do whatever. And it's, it's good. I enjoy it. loves to iron the clothes. <laughs> she loves it. Like it's a treat for her to iron. Yes, to so, iron yes. and fold clothes, but they have to be hot. Like if I can do it when they're hot and um, put those away and like all the mopping, I clean out the refrigerator. And it's so funny because I said something one day. I um I said, you know what? I have never seen you mop the floor. Something I said. And he was like, you know what? And I have never seen you pay a bill. I said, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, rude. <laughs> So it's kind of like, yes, we all have our responsibilities. Some things you'll do and I won't do, and some things I'll do, you won't do. Like it's all good. All just averages out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's the basically the gist of it. Um, I'm trying to see if I missed anything, but mostly like the household stuff I typically do. And because I'm home all the time, you know, I don't work outside of the home. So I try to um 
like, you know, the dust and the vacuum. I try to take care of that stuff. And because I feel like since I'm here most of the time. So when he is here, I'd rather spend time together as a family yeah. than for him to be like off doing something mm -hmm. else or having to do some. So just take care of that. And then, Jen, as you said, like if company is coming or um, or if, you know, we'll have days we'll clean up together. It's not like he's like, oh, that's your task. And you know, I'm not doing that. Or I'm like, that's your task. I'm not doing that. Like, it's still like D it's a team effort. You know, yeah. this is a team, like you live here too. We both live here. And so we work together. And so I have this one story to share about the trash. So we have this trash, you know, they come in waste management, comes and pick up the trash. So we keep this big trash can in the back. And so typically I would put all the trash can in the trash can on the back porch and then Chris would take it to the road once a week when they came and pick it up. So one day I go outside recently and there's a snake, a snake on the a picnic table that we have on our back porch. And I was like, at first I was like, are you playing a game? Like I thought they were playing a game on me. Like, is this thing real? Like, why is it on top of the picnic table? So I come in the house, I asked Chris, I was like, Chris, it is <laughs> is the snake on the table real? He was like, if it's out there, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> and so I stopped putting the trash in the trash can. And now he comes in. He's like, y'all go through a lot of trash. I'm like, it's always been that way. I've just been the one putting it out there. But since it's a snake been out, I'm not going out there. <laughs> I'm not going out there anymore. No. And he was like, the snake is not out there. I was like, well, listen, neither am I. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even take it out there. In the club, I need you to, I want to picture it. I need like a visual. So in the Ardent Wives Club, I want you to take a picture of that picnic table. I so sure I will. And this, I mean, the trash is, I and I was like, it. I froze in my steps and this little head. Oh, was yeah. Like, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't need a picture. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you can tell me I believe you 100%. I mean, it's like the door. That's, I mean, it was so, like, it was up in our space. It was like it was mm -hmm. out in the yard. And I was like, you want me to go out there and throw a bag in the trash can? No, sir. No. That's like the rat. There's a, there's a raccoon in our neighborhood. It's a mama raccoon. She's a big girl. She's a big girl. Okay? <laughs> she looks like a little bear. <laughs> and, um, and we know she's a mama because the babies are getting bigger or whatever. And I, mm -mm, not me. And it won't be me. I took a picture of her. I was like, mm -mm, see, this is why we're going to put a rock on the trash now. Because we don't want right? her hanging out in our trash can and bringing her babies. Yes. So Ooh, I, I know, right. we, so we digress. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for the two of you. So how do you keep your heart and your attitude in check as you're serving in your home? It's definitely shifted for me over the years, I think. And I love what you said when you were, you know, when Reese was first born, you felt overwhelmed and you guys kind of navigated that. So I remember that feeling of overwhelm. And I remember... Also in my own heart, I think something that leads into this is the expectation where, you know, what am I expecting and what am I expecting of myself? Even what pressure do I put on myself for that's my house true. to have to look that's perfect, true. to have to look. And that's played into it over the years where, and we have, this is still a current kind of like butting of a head. I'm like, before someone comes over, there's certain, like the counter should be clear the floor should be mopped. Like I have a certain idea in my mind of what the house should look like. Rondi doesn't have the same. He's like, whatever, like our house could be lived in. Right. So we, that I think can butt up against each other even now. And I think that um, I've had to learn over time, even for my kids. I'm like, well, you know what? I don't, if your room isn't clean, that's on you. I'm not going to get angry and get upset. So I think for me, it's that's one layer of it, of like, like, I've got to look at what is my expectation? Is it reasonable? Is it causing um, angst, right? And and dealing with that and from the root. So I think there's that piece. And then there are times where I have to say, okay, this season, like, of doing all this, okay, I'm doing it to serve my family. Like, I have to remind myself of that, you know, that I'm doing this because I want my house to be organized. Like if I want it done, I can't get mad at everyone else because they don't want it. It's my, it's my 
my, I do feel better when things are in place. I don't like when things are out of place. I don't, I just don't function as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think realizing that it is for, to serve everyone else, but it's also, it makes me feel good to have that. And I can't put that on anyone else. Like I can't expect Rondi to have the same thing. I, he makes the bed every day. I think he doesn't like when the bed isn't made. And so he does it like, and that's, you know, that's great. Like that's your thing, you know? So, um, and I've learned over the years too, there's certain things I, when the kids were young, I used to put all their stuff on the stairs for them to bring them up when they'd walk up. They, they didn't always get that memo. Um, but it would drive my husband crazy. He's like, stop putting it. And something I still do is when I'm cleaning the kitchen, I take the trash bag out and I leave it out. And he's like, are you going to put that somewhere? You know, I <laughs> mean <laughs> that, that there's certain things that we each do around the household that can kind of spark, bring a little spark, you know, but I think realizing, okay, a lot of the things I do, it's because I need and I want the household to run smoothly and I want my kids to have healthy food. I'm not as good as a cook as you, D. I'm suspecting just because I know with Faith Fueled Life and all the recipes and all that, you know, <laughs> I, do, I try. I do my best, you know. So I think there is a place of like, this is on my heart and I want to do that. I don't, I don't always feel that way if I'm tired, if I'm feeling like I'm overwhelmed, if you bring someone in my house when it's not cleaned up or you don't give me enough notice, I'm a, I'm going to have to deal with that angst. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's good. You mentioned like expectations, right? Because we do as why we put pressure on ourselves and we think that our homes are supposed to look a certain way. And then we project that onto our husbands and our kids and we're yelling and upset. Like, <laughs> like this place is not supposed to look like this, you know, and then looking internally and say, okay, well, this is my thing. Am I willing to do it? And if I am, then I do it. And then accepting that, my husband may not be on the same page. That don't mean yell and nag and be a life sucking wife instead of a life giving wife, but just accepting that and say, you know what? It's not his thing. <laughs> you know, this is my thing owning that and then moving from that place. Yeah. I think um, I'm blessed. Edward and I are very much equally yoked when it comes to household management. Both of, first of all, we're minimalist home, home, so we don't have a lot of things to clutter. Oh, bless you. Um, yeah, I know, I know about the yard sale room. <laughs> that does not. My husband loves to purge. He lo he enjoys throwing stuff away. He loves it. Um, so that's really great. And we just kind of because I'm just thinking of like actually cleaning the house. It doesn't take a lot of our time because we don't have a lot of stuff to clean. Like our floors, we have them, the, we all take turns. We have different days. We sweep them off the floors every day. We have the wood floors um, for the most part. And then like Saturday, we have kind of like a deep clean, but it's not really that big. But there is a few a few triggers of mine that we have. So um, in the way that we've compromised over them. So grocery shopping is, that's my, that's mine. <laughs> I'm very territorial over it. I get very irritated when he goes and picks up a few things, especially if they're crap food. And crap food in my house is carbonated drinks, refined sugar, artificial sweeteners, um, flavors, and colors, and processed food. But I know people can't live like D and like only eat protein and produce. So what we do in my home is when I go grocery shopping, um, the girls actually make uh, meal plan. So they tell what, what's going to be for dinner. Ed will eat whatever I make. So that's fine. Um, so I'll buy all the ingredients. Now, if you want crap, you're allowed to have crap. I just want <laughs> people to know that my kids are allowed to have Twinkies, but they got to tell me that that's not going to be on the grocery list. If I'm going to the grocery store, I'm not going to just go into the, that aisle and find some snack foods for them to eat. They have to specifically tell me. Um, and I often get a text when, when I'm at the grocery store, like, oh, I forgot to put this on the list. Can you add it? And it's quite, quite all right. Fudge sickles is Layla's new thing. Like, she loves fudge sickles. <laughs> Go for it, Layla. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, but I have to be honest too. My kids eat pretty well because, like, they kids mimic what you do. They don't really listen to what you say, right? Um, so sometimes, like, yeah. So fudge, I'm okay with it. It's all right. My kids can have crap food. It's not. It's not like um, I'm not making food like bad or good in my home. I want them to be able to explore. So that's the only thing. So when he does pick up crap food, like on his way home, and I know it's because he wants it or whatever, it, it irritates me a little bit because it wasn't on the grocery list. 
Um, but I had like, that was a compromise. I'm like, okay, I, let's compromise whatever you want. Let me know. I'll get it. But don't expect me to like spend most of my food budget on food. That's not, it's, I call them chemical foods. They're not real food. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the one thing I'm thinking. And then like, um, sometimes Ed just gets in a cleaning mood. I think we both do. I think it's part of our codependency, like just a way of controlling things. And we just kind of just go into, and some people deal with anxiety differently and we just clean and it's weird. So mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're that family. Like we're that really clean and neat family. And everybody's like, your house is always clean. I'm like, first of all, there's not a lot in it. And thank you. Like, <laughs> you know, there's not much to clean. So, but Mila She's kind of like Reese. She she says she's a princess too. And we call her messy Mila because Mila <laughs> is messy. And wherever she goes, she leaves Mila there. Like it's like, <laughs> wherever she goes, you know, because Mila has left a little pile of something everywhere. And so that is like the biggest issue too. And we're really trying to and get her to take responsibility but my middle is very much like us um my older one's gone but my older one too she was very clean her room would be messy but everywhere else like she didn't have her mess anywhere but just in her room and it wasn't even that messy but compared to her dad and i who we're just on type a when it comes to that it would you would say it was messy so mm -hmm. yeah we're just kind of we're we're neat freaks kind of <laughs> <laughs> um, so on this helps you right being on the same page kind of helps your your ability like there's less friction there it is but like so for the bills we had to navigate that like who pays the bills i actually pay the bills um just because i am just that's a skill that i thrive at and when i work with um especially at with authentic intimacy when i'm doing groups there's a chapter that talks about that about the um, man being a provider and who dealing with the finances and some women feel like am i a submissive wife if i'm the one who pays the bills or i'm the one who manages the finances and in my mind and from what i've gathered from dr slattery's book find the hero in your husband is if it helps to serve your husband um and support your husband in that way then yeah you're still submitting to your husband just because you're managing the finances and so for all these roles whether you take out the trash or he takes out the trash mm -hmm. To submit to our husbands is to be their helpmate, right? And to help them be the best that they can be. And my husband knows that finances isn't a skill that he's strong at. So that's why I do that. So I think no matter what the responsibility is, and that's just an example of it, as long as we're helping our husband and helping lead our family in whatever responsibility or role. Now, if your husband is the guy who cleans everything up and you get to sit on the couch and enjoy it, great. Mm -hmm. Or do you mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. But ultimately when we're submitting and, and cause that's what our, that's what our mission is, is for us to live and love and submit for Jesus. It's so that we can make our husband the best that he can possibly be. And that is what we are called to do. And so I just want to kind of put that out there um, for that woman who's listening and they're like, well, I do a lot of the work or whatever the case may be. If that's helping your husband be a better man and show up in life better than that is a role. And so our heart posture also reflects that, right? We're submitting mm -hmm. not because we, we want to do, do the toilets. Like that's not why we're submitting, you know, yeah. we're submitting because we're submitting for Jesus and out of reverence for God and, mm -hmm. and we're called to help uplift our husband and lead our family. So I wanted to just kind of put that in there. Yeah. And I think it goes back to, you know, our like anchor verse, you know, we did the study in season one on Titus, you know, in the first thing in there is like, teach the younger woman, women, come alongside them and teach them to love their husbands and their children. And I think that's a part of loving our husbands and our children is it's, you know, it's beyond like this emotional feeling, you know, it's yeah. action, love is action. And so it's like serving in our homes and putting healthy meals on the table. It's um, ironing clothes or doing the laundry, right? It's mowing the lawn. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is how I'm loving my husband and my children. And then also, you know, you look at 1 Corinthians 10, 33. It was like, whatever you do, whether you eat, you, you drink, whatever them. you do, you do it for the glory of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I know some days it can probably feel like it's a lot and you feel like you're the only one cooking. 
You're the only one washing the dishes. You're the only, <laughs> you know, and it can be so overwhelming. And if we're not careful, we can allow that bitterness to build up in our heart. And then that overflows onto our husbands and our children. So I think it's important um, to be anchored in why you're doing it. It's almost like, you know, you start a business. And it's like, well, what's our mission? What's our vision statement? And then you keep going back to that because it can get cloudy in the day to day. You know, um, you get overwhelmed by just the task you have and that's all you see. And so we have to rise above that. I'm like, okay, so why am I doing this again? you know, and the impact, the eternal impact it has for the kingdom, right? Because our children, they're going to do what they see us do. You know, they're going to have families one day. <laughs> and so- Except for Messy Mila. She does not see us leave yeah. our mess everywhere. I don't know where she goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell you guys, I feel like this is the one of the gifts and the blessings of being a Christian that we get to have, like, we don't have to go through life in that other way, right? But yeah. that we get to have this perspective and that gift of Christ, like that we have a greater reason that even when it comes to laundry, even when it comes to trash, even when it comes to that, that, that it penetrates every part of our life and it can help us to think higher, right? Yes. Our ways are not his ways. His ways are so much higher than ours. And I'm like, yeah. man, like, this is it. Both of you touched on it. Like, I'm so glad, you know, that place of man, like this is for the glory of the Lord. Like it is a bigger reason. And I love that D just the shame off. Like, like, yeah, like we get to whatever your gifting is. Right. And as long as you're not overstepping, right. right but you're helping and then having the attitude and the mindset, I'm like, this is a gift that yeah. we get. Like, yeah. and, and, and we don't have to be angry and resentful and right. Like, like we can go to another place. So I just, I just am kind of leaving or feeling just grateful for that. Yeah. 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 Mila said it best the other day and I've made this mama so proud. She was like, mom, I just love my life. And I was like, why? And she's like, cause I get to praise the Lord. And I was like, amen. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what we get to do. We just get to praise the Lord. And, and, and all whatever things. We, and all yeah. we do, like you said, you, you get the laundry out and you're ironing and you're listening to the sermon and you're praising the Lord. When you're scrubbing the floors, you can praise the Lord. Like it's really about the heart posture, honestly. And yeah. so I mindset. hope that's what we leave uh, wives with today. Yes. And so thank you, um, wives and those who may not even be wives yet, wives in the waiting. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And listen, don't be selfish with this word. If this word encouraged you, please share it with your girlfriend, share it with your mom, another sister in Christ who needs this encouragement to know that they're not in this alone. And even in things like household responsibilities, whether you're doing the laundry, um, you're washing the dishes, you're loading the dishwasher for the one million trillion time, you know, you can have joy, right? You, you can, your heart and your mindset could transcend this world and it can just be um, a delight, a delight to worship and serve the Lord in that way. So I pray that this episode was a blessing to you. Please, if you're watching us on YouTube, comment, like, um, this video, share it again with a friend and leave us a voice memo if you prefer to do that. We'd love to hear your voice and join us over in the Art and Wives Club too. That's where we really get to have so much fun and interact with you more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So join us over there too. And we will continue to live, love, and submit for the glory of the Lord. Until next time.